This is what you come to play Big Ten football for. You love these kind of challenges. You're going to find out how good you are. When you have this kind of crowd, this type of intensity, finally, here we are, two undefeated teams with a lot on the line. I feel like everybody's got like a superhero that they like want to tap into. For me, mine's always been like the Joker. In one of the movies, he asked Two-Face, do I really look like a guy with a plan? I like that. To me, it's almost like flowing like water, you know? However you want things to go, you can make things happen with whatever's going on. But plans don't always work, you know what I mean? Ronnie Bell, he finds a crease. Finally brought down at the 31 yard line. As soon as I went to like walk off and I fell was when I was like, okay, like hold on. Felt like a gut punch. The whole stadium went quiet and, and we went quiet just because Ronnie's a voted captain, he's a leader on our team. The doctor had mentioned like my ACL. They said it was gonna be like nine months. You don't typically think your son's gonna get hurt. You know, so you make a flight arrangements. My flight left at, you know, roughly nine o'clock that morning. So I get on the plane, I'm flying back. We're texting back and forth. I'm pretty sure at some point he realized I stopped texting. And I just got super emotional, um, just thinking to myself, I left my son here. <laughs> um, he's by himself and no one's there. You know, family-wise, uh, no one's there. But, you know, like I told him, at that moment, I have to trust Michigan that they're going to do everything possible to make sure it's good for him. I came in Sunday, you know, no more tears. You know what I mean? It was time to, you know, that was day one of recovering. A setback is a setup to come back. You know, it's one of those deals where I can't do it on the field, but what role can I serve to play the best role that I can to, to ensure that the guy's going to be successful on Saturdays? To be able to make the most of what now was my situation, you know, not being able to play, but I can still coach the receivers, coach the guys, and, and be here with the guys emotionally and, you know, mentally. You will see Ronnie out there with call sheets at practice, making sure receivers are in the right places, doing the right things. He was in meetings. He was making sure that he was supporting us, even though he couldn't really be with us on the field. I had been like rehabbing like pretty heavy at that point. Coach Harbaugh was trying to get me to suit up. The trainers knew it wasn't a good idea <laughs> because if I was gonna suit up, I was gonna try to run around. Dad even said no, because <laughs> I said, there's not a chance, because I know you. You know, you're, you're supposed to put pads on and just stand there. You're gonna try to put pads on and run. And they had not fully let that go yet, so. I'm like, man, nah, like, just keep things the way that we've been doing it. We've been winning, you know what I mean? Like, keep it how we got it. Mike Long scores! Touchdown, Michigan! The 2021 Michigan Wolverine football team is your Big Ten champions. Definitely like a bittersweet, a little bit, because you want to be out there. To watch that happen right in front of me is another thing that just like kept me so up. When I first took the starting quarterback role, I felt a lot of love from Penn State throughout the 2019 year. You're 8-0 heading to Minnesota. Clifford waits, takes it back to pass, three-man rush, steps up in the pocket, a lot of time, delivers down the middle, intercepted in the end zone, and Minnesota is going to get its signature win. I definitely saw a lot of scrutiny after that. It was the first time that I really felt some sort of, not attack, but more so critics come out of the, the water and really you know, start to critique my game. So I, I didn't really know how to handle that as a kid. 
Well, I just think that's kind of the nature of college football. And especially when you're at a place like Penn State. Sean had a lot of highs, he had a lot of lows. And I think when he had his lows, people tried to tear him down the most. I would say that the lowest point of my career was Nebraska 2020 for sure. Clifford keeps it under pressure, sack, fumble, and scoop by Deontay Williams. A scoop and score for Nebraska. It's like we might see a lot more of Will Levis here going forward. When you're losing and all you see is negativity and you're going home and you're just by yourself with your thoughts, it was definitely tough. Sean Clifford started this game, we'll have to look on. Low points are what define you. And we were taught that from a young age. Um, that's been instilled in us all the way from when we were little until throughout the time we've been in this program as well. So I think those have really made him who he is. They've, they've shaped his character. I think what defines me every single day is, is my character and how I hold myself. And it's to a very high standard. One thing people don't know about Sean is that he hates to fail. I used to ride the highs and, and ride the lows more to the extremes. And that's why I feel like I'm one of the most mentally tough athletes in the game right now playing college football, because I've been through what it's like to, to have thousands of people really hating on you. You know, the critics are always gonna be out there, I've realized, you know, whether you, you throw for 405 touchdowns or not. That's where you, you see it and feel it with Sean, where you probably take his record and his accomplishments maybe at some other places, and they're, they're pretty happy about it. He's grown dramatically. I know he's gonna be a success the rest of his life for going through these experiences, but they're not always fun. The same way I was brought in is the same way I wanna go out. You know, Trace McSorley, never wavered from giving me advice, never held anything away from bringing me to my success. So it's the same thing with you know, the young guys, Christian Veyu, Drew Alar, and as a leader, I think that that's very important. He could look at it and be like, I just wanna take care of what I'm doing and not help everybody else around me get better. So that's just who he is and uh, that's what we need. The five-star quarterback, true freshman, Drew Aller, is warming up on the sideline. This is who many Penn State fans feel that they've been waiting for. It's embracing the fact that, hey, we're going to play the backup. We got to get him some experience, and, and that's going to cause some challenges. Sometimes everybody loves the backup. Him embracing what's in the best interest of our program as a whole, and him managing that and coaching that and being a mentor to those other guys in the room is also really important. I know he's got a ton of respect. And Clifford going to the end zone, and it's caught. Touchdown, Nittany Lions. He's still writing his story, and he has a lot of control in how that story is going to be written. He may be writing it, but it's probably on the last chapter. And how this last chapter plays out will have a big factor in his legacy, in our legacy. The moments come and go quick. Clifford lofts it up. Touchdown, Penn State! Unbelievable! I want to say that I have no regrets. I want to say that when we come out of the Michigan game, we didn't leave any cars on the table. When I'm 50 years old, no matter what the outcome is, to be able to tell my kids, I gave it all that I had, and that team did too. The biggest like mental wall I think I was facing was just like, like man, you better come out of this, like better. Coming back and sucking, there was no way I could let that happen. I could feel myself being timid, you know what I mean? Like, I feel myself, like, 
like pulling myself back from certain situations. I mean, I'd have like bad dreams, you know what I mean? Like just uh, things keeping me up at night. He was really worried about him jumping and landing again. Cutting, planting, going down instead of running, you know what I mean? Like so many different things that would just play over and over in your head. I'm like, Ronnie, you need to sleep. And he's like, Dad, I can't stop thinking. You know, what if, what if, what if? And of course, me being who I am, like, well, what if it doesn't happen that way? It was like day five. I just remember leaving my feet. And that, that was like the first time like, I left my feet to go get a ball. I don't think he came down with that one. But he said, Dad, I got up and I ran back to the huddle as if I scored an 80-yard touchdown. First time I really ran like a hard dig route in the spring. And then the first time I left my feet, like those two weights lifted off were like, man, like, and after that, man, I just felt like a butterfly. From Ann Arbor, Michigan, it's the home opener for the Wolverines taking on Colorado State. Before the game, my dad was there and I went to from like so excited to just like, like just tears. And he puts his face into my chest and we, we just share a moment right there and he's crying and I'm crying, but I'm saying this is everything you worked for. And number eight is back. The microphone is yours, Ann Arbor. That crowd applause you hear is for Ronnie Bell. When we were in my room, we were looking down that tunnel of what these next nine months, what this next year was about to be. It really felt like I was on the other end of that tunnel. Like I'm ready. To the 10, to the 5, touchdown Ronnie Bell! Here we go, folks. Fourth and goal from the three. You can't just get some. You gotta get it all on this one. Patterson back to throw. Pressure coming. Looks, throws. When he initially threw it to Ronnie, I thought we we've tied the score. This is it. No oh, drop! No! Drop! Ronnie Bell couldn't hold on. Wow, that would have tied it up. For me, it wasn't even that like, you know, like I dropped the ball or like I lost us the game. It was like, I just lost this game for the seniors. That was like the part that was like really messing me up. There's Ronnie Bell, you just feel for a moment. He keeps his head up. Ronnie and I take the long walk down to the spot where he dropped the ball. We just talked, and I looked him in the eyes, and I said, Ronnie, this spot right here is going to make your career here at Michigan. What just happened isn't what's going to define me. What's going to define you is how you answer, how you respond. Are you going to let it crumble you? Are you going to let it make you better? And he just looked me in the eyes, and he said, Dad, it's going to make me better. On my drive back to Pittsburgh, Ronnie's in the plane headed back to Michigan. And we're seeing things on Twitter. He was receiving DMs, like, get off the team. I just remember removing all my social media. But then he gets this certain email that came directly to him. He screenshots it and he sends it to me. He goes, look at this mess. You need to quit, go back and play basketball. And so dad goes into dad mode, of course. And before he sends me the message of do not do anything, it was already done. I put it on social media just so it can get out there like this is what's happening, you know, over a drop pass. I was angry and it was protecting my son. People started almost looking out for him. The trust in all of my teammates, like it hadn't been broken, hadn't been lost. That was like, what helped me, you know, get over the hump. I think the love that the Michigan fan base gave him outside of this particular person and a few others, as far as, you know, social media go, the love that the fan base has given him was unreal. I told him, I said, Ronnie, you got more love for a drop pass <laughs> than anyone in America, you know, could ever dream of. And he actually asked me why. 
I said, Ronnie, I think it's more of the fact you give it everything you have when you're out there. You know, you didn't drop it on purpose. You gave it everything you had. I think the fan base saw that in him. They've given him so much love. Our family can't, we can't say thank you enough. <laughs> Conditions for a huge showdown between Michigan and Penn State. There's a, a great buildup all week long. Both of these teams undefeated 6 0, 5 0, top 10 ranked teams. This is the game why you come to Michigan. This is why you come to be special to play in games like this. Everywhere I went to, you know, Michigan's the best team Penn State's played all year. Very true. Penn State's the best team Michigan's played all year. Penn State on three, one, two, three. Penn State! You got to go. Ready, 15, take 15. And take 10. Everybody was wondering what the maze out would be like uh, not being a night game. It is still spectacular. And we're set to go for the big house. First quarter, all Michigan, 126 yards to nine. They're moving the football. That's great. We've got to find and solve the issue in the red zone. McCarthy back to pass, looking, fires. He's got his man for a first down. It's Ronnie Bell out to the 50-yard line. First and 10 ball, left hash from the Penn State 36 yard mark. JJ McCarthy handoff to Donovan Edwards, big hole across the 30, the 25, deep into the Penn State secondary. This is the opportunity right now, punch it in behind that big offensive line. First and 10 from inside the one, handoff to Blake Corum up the middle. Wolverines holding their hands in the air, and now an official puts his hands up. Michigan touchdown. Talked about making Michigan uncomfortable in the pregame. Well, they are as comfortable you can be here in this first half. Right now, you don't panic. You're down 13 and nothing with a lot of time left in this game. So don't worry about scoring right now. Just put some positive plays. Let you to get a first down because Penn State does not have a first down right. in this game in the first half. Clifford keeps it. 35-40. Clifford's gone. 50-40-30. 20, 15 to the 10, tripped up inside the five at the four yard line, the longest run of Sean Clifford's career. Fourth down, a half yard. Big decision now for James Franklin. I think he'll go for it. I think he will as well. From the shotgun, Clifford on fourth and one. Huge play here. Allen, left side, touchdown, Penn State. The Nittany Lions respond with a 75-yard drive as Allen scores his fourth touchdown of the year. Well, there you go, Penn State, fourth down. They're on the board. Well, you know what, that run by Clifford and the touchdown jump-started the offense, but it also can jump-start the defense as well. McCarthy under set, rolls right, chased by Mustaver, delivers downfield, knocked away, intercepted by Jacobs. 40, 40, Jacobs to the 20, 15, 10, 5, touchdown Penn State. Just like that, the Nittany Lions are an extra point away from the lead.
Every team has gut checks, and this is one of them for Michigan. You want to be a championship team? You got to answer the bell when you get into the second half of games against good opponents. Yeah, that bell's been rung. Penn State obviously made some adjustments offensively. Let's see what they've done defensively and how does Michigan adjust to it? Do they continue to pound the ball? J.J. hands it off to Edwards, running right. He's got a hole to the 40, to the 50. One man to beat. He cuts inside. He's in the clear. Donovan Edwards, 20, 15, 10, 5. Touchdown, Donovan Edwards. And they're going to go for two here, leading 22-17. Quick pass, far side. Bonnie Bell's got it. He'll walk into the end zone. Two-point conversion is good. 24-17 Michigan as the pendulum swings back and forth in Ann Arbor. Now it's up to the defense to see what they can do. He'll step up in the pocket and he will run. Will Johnson comes up and puts the shoulder into Sean Clifford. You can talk a lot of different things about Sean Clifford, but one thing that you can't question is his toughness. He is a tough sucker at quarterback. Fourth down and six. Clifford back, delivers far side for Washington off his hands, incomplete, and Penn State will turn it over on downs. Michigan's offense hasn't been stopped all day other than the interception. Here's a chance for them to really extend this lead. Horn, big hole, out to the 50. He's in the clear, John, to the 30, to the 20. Can he win the race to the end zone? He can. How about that? Oh, God. Touchdown, Blake Horn, 61 yards. So well, now, here's what Penn State needs. They need to be the next team to score. I don't see Sean Clifford here on the sideline, and Drew Allers getting prepared to come into the game. And here we go. Drew Allers, your quarterback. I know he's got a strong arm, but you would think at a time like this, they would want the experience of Sean Clifford. Michigan goes to 7-0. Penn State falls to 5-1. Hey, I look up to you, bro. Keep doing you, all right? Keep going. Yes, sir. Hey, stay healthy. Hey,